Now, one of the biggest problems in studying astronomy is the enormous distance scales. But actually, even worse is the enormous time scales, the huge 4 point, uh, 14 billion years since the Big Bang. So to try and explain some of those, we're going to do an analogy here. So what we're going to do is have the look at the Big Bang right here. And down there, where Brad is jumping in the distance, that is the present day. So this 100 meter track from here across is going to be the entire history of the universe. So I am the Big Bang, so bang! The entire universe appears in a fireball of energy. And then all you've got is clouds of gas swirling in space and dark matter, of course. And for a few hundred million years, nothing much happens. But then eventually we get the very first stars and galaxies forming. We're not quite sure when, but somewhere around here. And now we walk. Okay, so that was a long walk. We've walked for 9 billion years, and now we're only 4.6 billion years in the past. So what happens here, Carly? Hi, Paul. I am the formation of the solar system and all of its planets, including the Earth. So a giant cloud of gas swirls down, collapses and forms. Oh, there we go, some interpretive dance, and forms the solar system and the Earth. What happens next? Yeah, so at the moment I'm just a bit of rock, there's a bit of uh, lava going on, but there's no life. We have to keep walking before we see that. Okay, so we're not quite sure when life got going because the rocks from very early on did not survive. But by the time we're here, we're starting to see life, are we? Yeah, very macroscopic life, not very complex yet. We have to wait a few more billion years for that to happen. Okay, so here we're seeing the first evidence of evidence of microscopic life forms. But for complex life, we're going to have to walk a bit further. Okay, so we've walked another 4 billion years, and now we're only 400 million years from the present day. So what have we got here, Pete? Yeah, so here we're at the point where we're starting to get complex life, so plants and animals, and this is what we call the Cambrian period. Okay, so at long last we get uh, something other than microscopic life forms on Earth. Do we get dinosaurs yet? Not quite yet, but dinosaurs we've got to go a little bit further. Oh, even further? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like we've got some dinosaurs now. Yeah, so here we are about 220 million years ago, uh, and at this point that's the earliest geological evidence that dinosaurs were roaming the Earth. Okay, and so for over 100 million years the dinosaurs dominate the world. What happens then? Until... An asteroid wipes them out. So 60 million years ago, something big from space comes and bye-bye dinosaurs. We're then left with the last 40 centimetres on the scale, last 60 million years or so, of mammals dominating the world until eventually we come to here, to today. And all of us, in all of human history, if we zoom down to our rubber duck, can be found on the tip of the rubber duck's nose. And so when we think about history and humanity and buildings and things from this whole timeline, we're just that little tip on this little duck's nose. And if we look all the way back past the dinosaurs, past the beginning of the earth, the Big Bang is way down there. So, 
first Homo sapiens appears about one millimetre from the tip of the duck's nose, and all of human history from you know, the pyramids through to the present day Industrial Revolution is all less than the thickness of a human hair. And what about the future, Paul? Well, let's see. So the telescope, we have reached the future. And so, Pete, you are the future. What's happening here? So at this point, in about two billion years, the sun is going to get so hot that our oceans are going to boil. Doesn't sound good. But the Earth's still going to be here, just a bit unpleasantly hot. So let's keep on going and find the ultimate fate of the Earth and the solar system. So here we are, five billion years in the future. What's happening here? Rawr! I am the sun, and I'm getting really big and small, and I'm going to take up all of this area and eat everything. That is the end of the Earth. The sun swells up to become a red giant, Rawr! and the Earth will either be embedded within it, or maybe just outside, but baked dry. So this is the end of, the, well, not quite the end of the sun. The sun will keep on as a little shrunken white dwarf after this brief moment of enraged anger and obesity. But that's it for the Earth, I'm sorry. Goodbye. So let's look back at what we've been through. So that's the last five billion years from the present. Okay, so that's hopefully a useful analogy of the whole time from the Big Bang to the present day and the present day onwards to the end of the uh, Earth. The universe will keep going as far as we know, infinitely far, so I couldn't really walk to say the further bit. As time goes on, the galaxy is going to run out of fuel and the stars will eventually die out and form just black holes, but that's all going to be kilometres and kilometres that direction. However, to help you understand it, we're going to try another analogy now. So let's try another analogy to try and make the age of the universe a bit clearer, perhaps a bit of a more intimate analogy. So rather than walking up and down that 100 metre track outside, let's try and use a time analogy where we shrink the entire history of the world down to one calendar year. So the Big Bang happens on the 1st of January and present day is the 31st of December midnight. So on this scale, we have the Big Bang, 1st of January, galaxies form through January sometime. The Earth doesn't form until roughly the 1st of September. Um, the first signs of life will be late September, early October. But the first real life, like animals and plants, is maybe about the 20th of December on the scale. The dinosaurs emerge around Christmas Day, the 25th of December, and then die out around the 29th or 30th of December. So then we get the age of the mammals from the last couple of days of this year. And then we start getting humanity. And to demonstrate humanity, I'm going to use this lovely old historic clock here. Um, Mount Stromlo Observatory, like many observatories around the world, were originally timekeeping centres, which is why we tend to have these lovely old clocks around. This has minutes around here and seconds around the outside. And we want minutes for the history of humanity, because Homo sapiens first appeared around 10 minutes to midnight on the scale. And the first uh, humans arrived in Australia, the Aborigines, uh, around two minutes to midnight. Then if we're going to get to recorded history, we need to go down to the seconds. So about 10 seconds to midnight is when we start getting the first written history. It's when the pyramids of Egypt were built and the first cuneiform inscriptions in Babylon. About five seconds to midnight is the height of the Roman in Empire or the Han Dynasty in China. And then half a second to midnight is when we get the Industrial Revolution. So hopefully this makes clear once again how very long the history of the universe is and how very, very short is humanity's contribution to it. And but hopefully we'll have a long future with humanity. So going forward in time, maybe we'll be around a bit longer. One can hope.